91. I am always going to be here for you. Dan was on cloud nine. Finally, he had successfully gotten rid of Alyssa. Dan had trapped her in her move, and then he had finally freed himself from Alyssa. He felt very light, as if a huge burden was off his shoulders. He just wanted to call Blair and tell her everything in detail. But the... Episode 91. I am always going to be here for you. Dan was on cloud nine. Finally, he had successfully gotten rid of Alyssa. Dan had trapped her in her move, and then he had finally freed himself from Alyssa. He felt very light, as if a huge burden was off his shoulders. He just wanted to call Blair and tell her everything in detail. But then again, he recalled what had happened in the morning, and that made him angry again. He then thought to himself, Not anymore, Blair. I won't come to you anymore. I won't speak to you unless you realize the importance of trust between two people and how that affects everything in a relationship. After giving a thought, Dan was able to convince himself that he would not approach Blair. He looked at the sunset through his window. He had to let his father know about everything, too. He wanted him to know the truth about her as soon as possible. In addition to that, it was important for his father to know because he always held a soft corner towards Alyssa. Unless he showed and told everything to his father along with solid proof, he may not even believe a word against her. Dan was walking towards his father's room when he spotted Matt running towards him. Dan screamed from a distance and asked, What happened, Matt? Is everything okay? Sir, I, I think Miss Hughes has already messed up something. Mr. Scott's blood pressure has gone high. I have even given him vital medicines. I've been watching and observing him for the last half an hour, but there is no improvement. We have to immediately take him to the hospital, Matt replied in a panicked tone. When Dan heard about his father's current condition, he also panicked and rushed towards his father's room. Damn it, Matt. Where were you when the mess up was being done? Call the ambulance right away, shouted Dan. Matt was embarrassed as he spoke. Sir, I... I had gone to collect an important parcel, and when I retreated, I saw Ms. Hughes giving him a glass of juice, and I have already called the ambulance. After hearing about what had happened, Dan began to clamp his teeth in anger and said, Vanessa Hughes, I will screw you. Dan took another look at his father. He was lying unconscious. Although he tried to shake him and then tried to talk to him, Dad... Dad, please, open your eyes, please, Dan begged, but Bart did not react or respond at all. He was still unconscious. Matt had quickly started to pack all the essential stuff that was needed to be carried to the hospital. Dan stood next to his father and began to sob. Suddenly, he heard the ambulance's siren and became all active. They both rushed towards the ambulance. It was good that Vanessa was not home at that moment, or else she could have created an all-new drama. Since the time Dan had dropped Blair home, she was unable to focus on anything at all. She could not stop thinking about him. She tried hard to distract herself, but she could not focus on anything. Her mind was continuously thinking about whatever happened last night and that morning. Blair thought of giving a call to Dan, but the way he had treated her on their way back home, she was unable to gather the courage to call him. While she was stuck at a crossroads, she got a call from Jeremy on her phone. She then thought to herself, why is Jeremy giving me a call? As soon as she answered his call, she heard Jeremy's panicked voice. Miss Cooper, could you please reach the hospital right now? Mr. Scott is very sick, requested Jeremy. When she heard about the news, she panicked a lot. Jeremy, what has happened to Mr. Scott? He was all fine until yesterday, she asked. Jeremy then explained to her. I do not know exactly. I just got a call from Dan, sir. He just told me things briefly. I thought that you must know about this, hence I called you. Dan Scott might need you to be with him. 
But yes, please do not tell him that I told him about this and that I asked you to come over, said Jeremy. Understanding his situation, Blair explained to him, You don't worry, Jeremy. I won't say a word to Dan. I will be there very soon, replied Blair. After disconnecting the call, she quickly picked up the bag and left for the hospital. On her way to the hospital, she kept wondering why Dan had not called him. The last time he had called her while he was on his way to the hospital. Blair got a bit irritated and thought, who forgets relationships because of such trivial matters? Amidst this confusion, she reached the hospital. While walking towards the ICU, Blair was panicking. I don't even know how Mr. Scott would react to seeing me, thought Blair. While going towards the ICU, she saw Jeremy right outside the ICU. As soon as Jeremy saw her coming, he quickly walked towards the other side of the ICU. Perhaps even he did not want to witness the meeting between Dan and Blair. Using the viewing glass, he was peeping inside the ICU to keep a look at his father. Blair walked faster, and then she said in a soft and gentle tone, Mr. Scott? As soon as Dan heard her voice, he was startled and turned around. Seeing her right in front of him, he was surprised. He had just secretly hoped to have Blair with him, and within a fraction of seconds, he found her standing right in front of him. Although he desperately wanted her to be there, because of his ego and stubbornness, he had not called her. Dan started wondering if he hadn't called her, then who informed her about his father's condition? When she noticed that he was lost in his thoughts, she shook him and said, Mr. Scott, why aren't you saying anything? Is your father okay now? As soon as she caught his attention, Dan hugged her right away. I do not know anything, Blair. They have just taken him inside. I do not know how his blood pressure went up so suddenly. Matt gave him some medicines, but still they did not help to bring down his blood pressure, Dan answered. While talking to her about his father, he had tears in his eyes. Blair had kept him in arms and was trying to console him like he was a little child. She gently tapped his back and thought for a while and then asked, But he was totally fine until yesterday. What happened to him suddenly? Dan nodded in agreement and then said, I am 100% certain that Vanessa has made this happen. Matt had gone out for some time and when he returned, he saw her feeding him with juice. After listening to the whole situation, Blair said, Oh my God, this woman turned out to be more dangerous than any of us had imagined. Dan continued to talk. And yes, I was right. Kim is nobody but Alyssa's cousin. Kim did everything as per Alyssa's and Vanessa's instructions, said Dan. What? So are you saying that Kim and Alyssa are cousins? Asked Blair. Dan nodded in agreement and said further, Yes, and that is why I told you that name sounded familiar to me. But you were not ready to listen. In fact, you were making fun of me. There was some disappointment in his tone. Blair smiled softly and then rested her head on his shoulder. Sorry, Mr. Scott. I am sorry. Perhaps I need to understand you more. There's a lot of scopes, but sometimes I find myself in such situations where my brain stops working and I fail to gauge what needs to be done, said Blair. Although Dan was still mad at her because of what had happened in the morning, having her next to him in a tough situation like that, he seemed to have mellowed down. Therefore, a thought crossed his mind. One minute. Who told you that Dad is admitted to the hospital? Asked Dan. Before she could respond, the ward boy came and said, Mr. Scott, Dr. Burton wants to see you in his cabin. Sure. Excuse me, Blair, I, I should go and see what's going on, said Dan, and he walked towards Dr. Burton's cabin. As soon as he was gone, she took a deep breath and occupied the chair placed right next to the ICU. She then suddenly found Jeremy coming towards the ICU. Hello, Miss Cooper. I am glad that you are here. God knows what the doctor is going to tell him. In this situation, I felt that if you would be here with him, it would help keep him motivated, Jeremy said in a calm tone. Blair smiled at him, replying, I should be the one thanking you, Jeremy. If you wouldn't have called me to tell me about Bart's health, I wouldn't have gotten to know. 
Blair and Jeremy were busy talking when Dan stepped out of Dr. Burton's cabin. Seeing the two of them together, Dan sensed that it was none other than Jeremy who had called her to the hospital. When Jeremy saw him coming toward him, he stood up. Dan took a glance at both of them and asked, Did you tell her about my dad's condition? Blair quickly nodded in disagreement. No, no, said Blair. But Jeremy looked down and said, Yes, sir. Blair was disappointed with his response, and then she angrily said, Jeremy, when you called me, you specifically asked me not to tell Dan, and now you are the one telling him the truth? Jeremy asked for forgiveness and said, Sorry, Miss Cooper. I don't know why, but I am never able to lie to him. When Dan noticed that they were both panicking, he took a deep breath and said, Leave it, guys. Blair interrupted him and asked in a panicked tone, What did the doctor say, Mr. Scott? Dan occupied the chair and said, What happened is exactly what I was scared of. When Vanessa realized that he was recovering, she had started to give him medicines that would increase his blood pressure. She had been giving him these medicines for the last three days. Oh my God, said Blair. Blair's eyes had become wide and she said, I should not have taken you home with me. When he noticed that Blair was blaming herself, he tried to explain to her what should have been done and what shouldn't. We don't have the time for that anymore. I'm going to take Dad to London tomorrow. I think this is the best opportunity as Vanessa is away for some work. At present, if she were here and seen all this happening, she would have created a new drama, said Dan. Jeremy agreed to what he said. You are correct, Mr. Scott. I am getting an air ambulance booked right away, said Jeremy. After finishing, Jeremy left from there. As soon as he was gone, Blair asked Dan, How is he feeling now, Mr. Scott? He is in a stable condition now. Matt had already given some medicines to him, as I had said. That is why Dad was stable when he was brought here, said Dan. When Dan finished talking, Blair asked him, Can we not tell Bart the reality about Vanessa? So that he could file for a divorce? Upon hearing her suggestion, Dan refused and said, Perhaps not, and especially not right now. I don't even know if Dad would be able to tolerate something as big as this right now. In addition to that, he made me promise today that I would always take care of her no matter what. So what, Mr. Scott? Kindness must only last for the kind and good people? If you break a promise for the greater good, then I don't think there is any problem with that, said Blair. When Dan realized that she was extremely serious about it, he affectionately ran his fingers through her golden curls and replied to her, We will keep all these things on hold for now, Blair. Right now, I am worried about his health and I will take him to London tomorrow. When Dan talked about going to London, Blair became a bit upset. Although she did want Bart to be taken to London for better treatment, hence she did not like the distance between her and Dan. When he saw that she was being upset at the thought of being away from him, he realized that it was the best time for him to tell her about Alyssa. That is why he looked at her with full attention. Blair, do you remember what I had told you two days ago? Asked Dan. Blair was worried about being away from him. That is why she had forgotten what Dan was even referring to. She nodded in disagreement and said, no, Mr. Scott, in fact, I do not remember. Just when Dan was about to tell her everything about Alyssa, a voice emerged from behind. It was a woman's voice. Hello, Dan. Upon hearing her voice, Dan and Blair both turned around to see who it was. Episode 92, An Attempt to Murder. Upon hearing the voice, when Blair and Dan turned around, they were both shocked. They found Alyssa standing there with her head bent. Seeing her, Dan lost his mind. He went closer to her and said, What have you come here for? What do you want now? Alyssa, I am telling you in advance, I do not want to create any scene here at the hospital. I won't tolerate any kind of misbehavior. I will call the cops right away and ask them to arrest you. When Alyssa heard his threat, Does everything change so swiftly, Dan? Are you threatening me now? Everything has changed, Alyssa. You are responsible for the change of the person. I am already under a lot of stress because of Dad, and I think it would be better if you get out of here. 
Dan turned away and replied. Hearing his rough and rude tone, she started to cry. I will leave tomorrow forever, and I will never come back. So you do not have to worry. I will be going anyway. I got to know that Bart's health was deteriorated a lot, and that is why I wanted to see him for the last time before I am gone forever, said Alyssa. When Dan heard her long speech, he took a deep breath and replied, He is in the ICU right now. You cannot meet him. He felt like screaming at her for what Vanessa had done, but then he thought of something and decided to stay quiet. Alyssa walked slowly and was tired. She went up to Blair and said, You won, Blair, and I lost. This is exactly what you wanted, right? You wanted to take him away from me? Make him yours, right? I never tried to do anything of that sort, Alyssa. I firmly believe in destiny, and I think if two people are meant to be together, they will eventually be together. But I guess you do not believe in it. Blair looked at her and answered. After hearing her, Alyssa smiled. Don't call your manipulative plans destiny. You know it very well that you did a lot of things to get closer to him, Alyssa remarked. After hearing her, Blair started getting irritated and then looked at Dan. When Dan saw her piss Blair off, he moved forward and interrupted. Alyssa, you can't talk to her like that, he said. Hearing Dan defend her, she replied, I know, Dan. She felt even more insulted as Dan was humiliating her in front of Blair. But she somehow controlled her anger and then slowly went to the ICU. She then peeped into the ICU to take a look at Bart Scott. She kept looking at him for some time and then went back to Dan. Bart had become all fine, she stated confusingly. After a deep thought, she added, Vanessa had been taking care of Dad a lot in the last two days. That is when I sensed that something weird was going on. As soon as he heard about this, he went closer to her and spoke. Knowing all of this, you still chose to keep quiet? You still had time, Alyssa. If you actually... You were worried about me or my family. You would have told me instead of supporting her and her plans. But you did not tell me anything at all. This is not done, Alyssa. While talking to her, he suddenly recalled something. Dan then calmed himself down and said, Oh no, who am I even expecting goodness from? He smiled sarcastically and then turned towards Blair. I will be back in a bit, said Dan. Perhaps he did not want to see Alyssa anymore. Okay, sure, Blair replied, and then Dan left. As soon as he was gone, Alyssa looked at Blair angrily and then tapped her foot and left right away. Just when Alyssa left, Blair breathed a sigh of relief and then waited for Dan to come back. Very soon, Dan was back with two cups of coffee. As he came closer to Blair, he asked her, She is gone, right? Blair nodded in agreement and then softly replied, why is Alyssa leaving the United States so suddenly? Dan extended the cup of coffee to her and said, Yes, that is because I have put her in a situation where she is left with no option. She is well aware now that she has nothing to do in the United States. What do you mean, Dan? asked Blair. Blair asked in surprise as she had no idea what Dan was trying to say. Seeing Blair so curious and restless, Dan put his hands in his pocket and took the document and then handed it over to her. That was the same agreement that Alyssa had signed earlier. Blair opened the document and started reading it. She could not figure out what exactly was on those papers. But when she read that document, she was taken aback. Finally, she read the whole document from start till finish. She jumped in joy and said happily, Mr. Scott, how, how did you do all this? Dan smiled and said, just, just like that. I trapped her in her trap that she had laid for us. He narrated the whole incident to her. After listening to the whole incident, Blair had a huge smile on her face. While she was smiling, Jeremy then walked in. As soon as he came, he told Dan, all the arrangements are done, Mr. Scott. Wherever you want to go, we will leave right away. Dan looked at Jeremy and smiled. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you so much, said Dan. Jeremy smiled back and greeted, My pleasure, Mr. Scott. Anyway, I suggest that you must get some rest now, and Matt is free too. Matt and I would be here taking care of Bart. 
Upon hearing Jeremy's words, Blair realized that he purposely wanted to leave them alone for some time. Before she could say anything, Dan asked her, Are you sure? One hundred percent sure, sir, said Jeremy. Jeremy said with full confidence. Then he looked at her and said, Let's go, Blair. Blair hesitated a bit, but then she followed him to the resting room. As soon as they reached the resting room, Dan took off his shoes and then got on the bed. If you want to go home, then, said Dan. While he was talking, Blair walked closer to her and placed her finger on his lips to shut him up. Do you think that I would leave you and Bart in this condition and go home? Asked Blair. Upon hearing her, he laid on the bed, smiling, and said, No, I do not think so. But I still asked so that you do not get an impression of me trying to take advantage of you. While talking, Dan had a smile on his face. Blair picked up the cushion placed next to her and threw it at him. Stop pulling my leg, Mr. Scott. Otherwise, said Blair. Otherwise what, hmm? Asked Dan. Dan caught the cushion and asked her. Blair smiled a bit and said, Otherwise, nothing. Dan was a bit surprised to find her going weirdly quiet, but then suddenly his headache started. He held his head with both hands and said, Oh my God. Blair got worried seeing him in pain. She quickly held his head and said, What happened, Mr. Scott? Are you okay? When he saw her worry so much about him, he said, Yes, I am fine. I think because of all this stress, I am getting a terrible headache. Blair sat right next to him on the bed and said, Hey, let me help you. I will give you a head massage. You try to get some sleep. She then removed his hands and placed hers on his head. She then began to give him a head massage. Dan was a bit hesitant and he tried to stop her and said, Oh no, please, I I'm okay. But she did not listen to him and continued to massage his head. Dan kept staring at Blair. He thought to himself, there is so much difference between Alyssa and Blair. She is not even close to what Blair is. I have hurt her so much and look at her. She cares so much about me and my family. When she saw him staring at her, she asked him, What are you looking at? He took a deep breath and said, I am just thinking about how I mistook a diamond as an ordinary stone. Had life not given me a second chance, I would have lost the chance to experience this love of yours. He held her hands and gently kissed them. Blair felt a bit restless when he kissed her hands. Before she could handle that touch of his, Dan grabbed her head and pulled her closer to his face. Blair's heartbeat raced. Dan closed his eyes and touched his nose to hers. When I am gone, will you miss me? Asked Dan. She rubbed her nose against his and said, No, not at all. Blair started smiling mischievously. Upon her response, Dan pretended to get a bit mad at her. Oh, so you won't even think of me? Asked Dan. Hmm, that is correct. I will not think of you, because I will always be close to you. My love will always be there, no matter what, said Blair. Her soft breaths were giving him a beautiful feeling. Upon hearing her response, Dan began to smile. He gently kissed her lips and said, Sometimes I feel that I am the luckiest person on this planet to have you. Every woman that I have ever met turned out to be a gold digger. I know there are very few people in this world who genuinely love others. Ever since I have known you, you have always proved me wrong. Blair smiled and then straightened her back and started to massage his head again. You know what, Mr. Scott? You will find all kinds of people everywhere. And that is why you mustn't generalize and don't judge people. When situations change, people change too. Look at yourself. You have changed so much. You used to be such an arrogant man, said Blair. She then burst into a laugh. When he saw her laughing so hard, he caressed her neck and smiled at her. Keep smiling like this, always, said Dan. He then closed his eyes. Blair was massaging his head using both her hands. She was staring at him constantly. It was just a matter of a few hours, and then Dan had to leave and go far away for a long time. In the last few weeks, they had grown close to each other. Blair was used to his presence. 
When they could not meet for even a couple of days, Blair felt her life was meaningless. She couldn't figure out how she was going to spend so many days away from him. The thought of staying away from him for so many days was disturbing her constantly. She was lost in her thoughts and Dan had fallen asleep. Blair then gently removed her hands off his head and slept on the sofa. She was looking at him. The nurse was gone after taking her midnight round. Jeremy was sitting on the chair placed right outside the ICU. He too had begun to feel sleepy. When Matt saw him dizzy, he said to him, Sir, if you want, you can get some sleep and I will keep an eye on Bart Scott. After an entire day of chaos, Jeremy was very tired. Although he did not want to sleep considering how tired and sleepy he was, he could not refuse Matt's offer. He stretched his legs and then fell asleep. As soon as Matt saw him fall asleep, he sent a text to a number. The way is clear. You can now come, read the text. After sending that text, he took a look at Jeremy and found him dead asleep. After some time, Jeremy woke up from a sound. He quickly opened his eyes and saw someone rushing towards Bart's room. At first, he thought it was some nurse wearing white attire. Since he was so sleepy, he was unable to understand anything. But then he became a bit active and fully opened his eyes when he noticed carefully, he realized that it was not a woman, but a man. He quickly followed that man inside the ICU. Jeremy was stunned to see what was happening. What he saw there was enough to blow his mind. He saw Matt standing right next to Bart's bed and he was holding Bart's oxygen mask in his hand. In the absence of oxygen, Bart was breathing fast and was desperate for air. As soon as Matt saw Jeremy, he quickly put the mask back on Bart. After the mask was placed back, he had started breathing normally. Witnessing all this, Jeremy rushed towards Matt and asked him angrily, What were you doing, Matt? You removed Bart Scott's oxygen mask? When Matt heard his strict tone, he started to cry and plead in front of him. I was not doing anything like that, sir. Please believe me. Please just let me explain things to you, said Matt. What would you explain to me, Matt? I just saw you removing his oxygen mask, said Jeremy. While they both were talking about all these things, Blair peeped inside the ICU. Could the two of you please come out? Asked Blair. When they saw her, Jeremy held Matt's hand and walked outside of the ICU. He kept looking at Matt angrily. Miss Cooper, do you know Matt was in the ICU and he took off Bartzer's oxygen mask so that he dies? Said Jeremy. Blair took a look at the two of them and then told Jeremy, leave him alone, Jeremy. It is not his fault. When Jeremy heard her in defense of Matt, he was taken aback. He gently freed his arm and then with a lot of confusion asked her, Are you sure, Miss Cooper? For once, Jeremy felt that Blair is also working with Matt against Bart Scott.